Yeah, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining the webinar. You've already had a little dance party with Greg. I love it. I love it. Today we're going to be talking about how to keep the accounting books for your nonprofit in order using QuickBooks. I'm Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer. I know you can't see me because my camera is not working today, but you can hear me and I can and see all of you in the chat room. Let me show you how you can engage with us today on the next slide. Um, continue typing in the chat. Greg has some team, team members here to help you out. Um, feel free to put your questions in Q&A as well. I, I think he'll kind of direct you. Um, we are recording this. You're going to get the slides and the video replay probably tomorrow. Someone has already turned the closed caption. That means you're, you're familiar with the closed caption. But if you need the closed caption, type on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. On the next slide, I'm going to talk about something that's really new here at TechSoup. I don't know if you heard the hype about Quad, but Quad is here and it is awesome. It will allow you to have memberships for 10 members in your organization and they'll have access to the entire TechSoup course catalog and so much more. I'm going to drop the link in the chat in a few moments, but you're here, here, Greg. So I'm going to turn this over to Greg, the, the QuickBooks guru. Greg, all over right. to you. All right. All right, guys. So first of all, um, it looks like we have about 300 people on the call now, um, which is about right. Uh, we have like 700 people that signed up uh, and they'll be getting the recording. But since y'all are here, you can really get your questions answered. Uh, so please do me a favor and put in the chat. Have you seen me teach before? Yes or no. Have you seen me teach before? Put it in the chat. Every single one of you. OK, cool. All right. So a number of you have not seen me teach before. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so I am Greg, uh, and I am a CPA with an accounting practice here in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, in addition to having an accounting practice in Atlanta, I also own QuickBooks Made Easy. And all we do at QuickBooks Made Easy, and I think what I'll do is just kind of show you on um, a website here, if I can find where it is. Uh, where is my website? Uh, huh. Let me move this over here. It's probably where you want to see. No, that's not there either. Where is my, where is my internet? Oh, you know what? My internet went down. That's what it is. All right. So let me go back to where my internet is. Um, this is probably a good thing to go to. All right, cool. So if you go to my website, which is quickbooksmadeeasy.com, uh, all we do at QuickBooksMadeEasy.com is teach people how to use QuickBooks that are nonprofits, okay? We have seminars, we have webinars, we have a three-day webinar series coming up at the end of this month for those of you using desktop QuickBooks, and then another one the following week for people using QuickBooks online. But this is our team right here. This is me, um, Paige, who's in the background here helping answer questions. Um, we actually have a woman by the name of Question. Um, she must have had a tough time growing up. Uh, and then we have Barbara and Paige, Question and Barbara are just like me. We all have accounting firms. All we do is talk about nonprofits using QuickBooks and we do consulting jobs. We do uh, monthly bookkeeping. I do audits in 990s. We do them for thousands of clients all over the country. Bill Sims is in charge of our operations and marketing and he's on the back end also to answer questions about anything. Uh, and let's see the link to the page, Bill, can you go ahead and put the link to the QuickBooks made easy page in there? Uh, so, uh, I'm going to just go right in here and, um, we have some discounts on some stuff, but I don't want to talk about that. I want you to learn. So what we're going to do today, uh, is we are going to talk about accounting. So I'm assuming that since you're here, you don't know anything about accounting. Okay. Cause that's the whole point of the course. Okay. Now, if you do then that's okay. You can still get questions answered, okay? Uh, uh, when we get into the uh, fair is like, will this be ap applicable to our Canadian group? I think so. I think it will. Um, all right, how to read financial statements. So we're going to define accounting, talk about how to read financial statements, and then what you should be giving your board of directors each month. Uh, and then we're going to give you the three most important things to track when you're entering transactions. And then we're going to show you how to use QuickBooks to track those things. And then we're going to give you some uh, places to go for more information. Now, if you are new to the world of doing Zoom and your screen is too small, 
because let me just show you, this is where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in QuickBooks and I need to go ahead and go to QuickBooks. Um, eventually I'll be in QuickBooks and I'm going to remote in uh, to a remote into QuickBooks here just so that you can kind of take a look at it. And if this screen looks really small to you, if you're like, gosh, I really can't see the screen here. Uh, then uh, I will tell you that if you push this little view button on the top right, uh, just roll your mouse around your Zoom screen until you see this little view and you pu push it. And then you push this full screen right here and it makes the screen bloop. It makes the screen gets bigger. All right. Um, uh, this webinar will talk about reading financial statements for about 20 to 25 uh, minutes in total, I think but we'll also get into some other details. All right, so um, let's see. What else do I need to see? So this is how you make it bigger. Uh, and now, first thing I wanna do before I go any further, I have a little poll that I want you to answer. Uh, and that is, let me go ahead and launch this poll. I wanna know what accounting package you're using. All right, so let's see what accounting, yes, the uh, recording will be available, yes. Notice how when you put a question in the chat, I will answer you immediately, okay? Anyway, so Chris put QB, that's not enough information, Chris. I need to know, is it QBO or QBD, uh, which is desktop? Don't put your answers in the chat. Please answer them using the poll, uh, unless maybe Susan or Kayla, you don't see any polls. Uh, in which case, maybe you're not in the Zoom using the app. Uh, that's okay, Chris, no worries. Uh, Paul is using something called Wave, which I've actually never heard of. Um, but anyway, we've got 333 people in the room. We've got 257 people that have answered. Uh, Paul Schultz, is there a reason why you didn't answer the poll? Um, Schultz is using something called Shepherd Staff. Are you a house of worship, Paul? Are you a house of worship? Uh, let me know. Okay, so uh, if you are a house of worship, the accounting for houses of worship are very different than everybody else. So I do want to show you where you can go for more learning as well. But um, I'll try and incorporate that as I go. So we've got just a, another few people that have answered. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll in five, four, three, two, one. And we do have 60 people that didn't answer, which is like they signed in, but then they must have gotten on the phone or something. I don't know. Hey. The webinar has started. Anyway, all right, so um, here's the results here. So as you can see, we've got 60% of the audience using QuickBooks Online and another 23% using QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, we only have 14 people that are using something else, okay? So that's amazing. Oh, no, that's wrong. Something else and don't know. So, we yeah, we got about 30 or 40 people that are using something else. That's funny. All right, Uh Yes, Tamara, she's a house of worship too. But first thing I want to do is talk about what accounting is, okay? So is everybody ready? I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing, and we are going to start talking about what accounting is. So somebody tell me that you're ready for me to start, and I will start. I need something in the chat. Hey, Gail, how's it going? Welcome. All right, what is accounting? Accounting. Look at the screen here because I have these pretty little slides. And this is real basic. It's the process of entering transactions into a list in your accounting software package. The list is called the chart of accounts. And then from there, you use those to create your reports, the financial statements. And that's really all accounting is, folks. It's the process of you know, you get money in and you get money out. It's just entering that stuff into a system so that it will get on reports, okay? So I think what I want to do is I want to start with the reports. So since most of you are using QuickBooks Online, I got to go somewhere to show you the financial report. So I'm going to start with QuickBooks Online. I'm going to use that as my example. So I'm going to pull up reports. Now, by the way, you probably already know this. Somebody tell me, what are the two main reports that I'm talking about? When you are trying to get reports out of an accounting system, every one of your financial statements appear on one of two reports. What are those two reports? One of them is the profit and loss, 
and one of them is the balance sheet, okay? So I'm gonna start with the balance sheet. So I'm just gonna pull up one here. Let's do a little balance sheet. And I gotta make it for a certain date range where I actually have some data. And all right, okay. So this, my friends, is a balance sheet, okay? Now, in the world of nonprofits, it might be called something else. Anyone know what else it would be called? Anyone else? If it's not a balance sheet in the nonprofit world, if you get an audit, they're gonna call it something else. Statement of financial position. Okay, now the person who had statement of activity scares me, okay? That's what a profit and loss is. We're looking at a balance sheet. So everybody, I need you to pay complete attention. There are two reports in accounting, and all accounting is is entering transactions, so they end up on those two reports. One of them is the balance sheet, which is also called the statement of financial position, and the other one is the P&L. We're going to do the P&L in a minute, okay? So here is the balance sheet. What the heck is a balance sheet, okay? The balance sheet, or the statement of financial position, you can think of it like a snapshot picture at a point in time of how your organization is doing. It's like somebody took a camera and they went click and they took a picture of your organization at a point in time. This picture was taken on June 30, 2025. All right. So on this day, June 30, 2025, it's a snapshot of what you look like. Now, I'm going to teach this real basic, guys, because we got a lot of people here, and I want to make sure everybody understands. The balance sheet is made up of two parts. The top part is called assets, and the bottom part is called liabilities plus equity. The top part's assets, that's everything you have on the date the picture was taken, and the bottom part, liabilities plus equity, that's everything you owed and what's left over on the day the picture was taken, okay? So on June 30, assets, that's everything that you have. I have some money in a bank account, checking and savings. People owe me money. That is something I have. It's an asset. I can't touch it but it's an asset. Somebody owes me money. That's a receivable. I can actually sell that asset to a third party company that will pay me less than what the person owes me. And then they'll collect from them. So it's an asset. You can sell it. Okay. Um, fixed assets like furniture and equipment. Most of you have at least some computers, chairs, desks, what have you. Some of you have buildings. Some of you have land. Some of you have cars these are assets fixed assets thing you ha things you have total amount of stuff we have is 127,045 on June 30 125 uh, 2025 because you know it keeps changing right every day the amount you have half changes <laughs> goes up as you make money goes down as you lose money Mike says define equity I will I will just let me get there okay all right so the bottom part, top part's made up of assets. Bottom part is made up of two parts, liabilities plus equity, okay? Now, liabilities, that's everything we owed on the same date the picture was taken. We owe $4,800 in payables. We owe $10,000 to American Express. We have some payroll liabilities we owe. We owe some money to the bank on a loan. Total amount of money we owe is $56,000, okay? Total assets, 127000 Total amount of money we owe, 56000 Now, here I go, Mike. Now, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on this because defining equity is the hardest part of teaching accounting. Well, one of the hard parts, okay? Real easy. Equity is simply the difference between what you have, which is your assets, and what you owe, which is your liabilities. OK, so one way of thinking about it is simply the difference between the two. I have one hundred and twenty seven thousand of assets on what day is this? June 30. You know what? I think I'm going to click this little drop down arrow to the right of or to the left of assets. So it collapses them all. So there's all my assets. 
and then I'm going to collapse my liabilities. So here's all my liabilities. So I have 127 of assets. I have 56,000 that I owe. Equity is simply the difference. And the reason why it's the difference is because if it's a balance sheet, it has to balance, which means the top half have to equal the bottom half, okay? Top half, 127,045. Bottom half, 127,045. That's why it's just a math thing. If you have your assets, you take away what you owe, the difference is equity. Okay, now I'm going to keep talking about this so you can really kind of understand the meaning behind equity as opposed to just, well, it's just the difference between the two. If assets is everything you have, all right, think about think about you doing a balance sheet for yourself personally. Let's say assets is, is your own assets. So you ever go to file like an uh, application to get a loan at a bank for a house or something, they make you fill out a balance sheet. And assets is all the stuff that you had, your clothes, your furniture, you know, your car, all that kind of stuff. Bruce, not talking about that yet. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. All right. Just pay attention here. So total assets, 127,000. That's everything I had personally. Liabilities is everything I owed personally. Now I'm going to ask you a question. If you said, okay, everything I have is 127000 and everything I owed was 56000 that means I have more than I owe. That's a good thing, okay? Don't you think that's a good thing? Wouldn't you want to have more than you owe, right? Somebody say something here. Letisa, don't let me, let me talk for a minute. Okay, cool. So, um, so here's the deal. I want equity to be a positive number. I want to have more than I owe, okay? Now, some people have another word for equity. They call it net worth. They say it's what you're worth, okay? Which is like a horrible thing to say about somebody. You know, it's like, well, what do you mean? I don't cast dispersions on me just because I owe a lot of money. But the reality is it's your financial worth. You have more than you owe. Okay. So you want this to be a positive number and the highest number, the higher it is, the more you have 127, as opposed to what you were, what, what you're worth. Another way of looking at equity is what's left over that I can use in the future. Okay. That's another way of looking at it. Let's think about it. Now I have $127,000 of assets on June 30. Let's say I went out of business on that day. Okay. Went out of business. And so I have all this cash and I have receivables and I have some fixed assets. I have some stuff, but I can't keep it all. It's not left over because I have to pay off $56,000 of debt. After I do that, by either paying with cash or selling the fixed assets, whatever's left over, $70,000, that's what's mine to keep. Now, if you're a nonprofit, you wouldn't really keep it. You'd probably donate it to another organization. But it's basically what's left over, okay? So does that make sense to y'all? Ask me more questions about equity before I move on, because I want to make sure that everybody is cool with what equity is we good? Okay. It does make sense. This is, think about it. This, yeah. Okay. It's very clear. If you, if you, all you had in your personal world was a home and the home you paid 700,000 for it. So your assets would be 700, but you had a mortgage of 400. So the mortgage would be 400. The difference is your equity or your net worth. I have 300. If I sold it, I'd pay off the mortgage. I have 300 left over. Nonprofits do not have equity. So Paul is just kind of telling me, dude, it's not supposed to be called equity. It's supposed to be called net assets, assets, net of liabilities. And he's right. But in QuickBooks, it says equity. Okay. Um, I believe there is a way if I click edit titles, it's only in QuickBooks online that can actually change the name to net assets. But I doubt you can do it in any other software package. But um, I think I can change it there. Uh, I got to refresh the screen, probably. I think it takes a minute before it refreshes. Uh, and there we go. Now it says net assets. Now, um, as far as the categories under uh, 
equity. They come in two flavors, unrestricted and donor restricted. They used to have three flavors. Now they only have two. So you should really have two um, accounts underneath it, one for unrestricted and one for donor restricted. Okay. All right. Uh, so Karen says she can change the report titles in a memorized report. You can't change the word equity. You can't change the account type. You can't. Okay. Um, all right. So anyway, um, that's the balance sheet. Now I'm going to move on to the PL. Now I'm going to teach you something about QuickBooks Online. If you right click on a tab here, in Chrome and click duplicate, it'll open up a second instance of QuickBooks. That way you can see more than one screen at a time. Anyone knew that? Put it in the in the chat. Anyone knew that already? That's such an easy way to work in QuickBooks. Yep. Who didn't know that? Who did not know that? Put that in there if you have QuickBooks online. It's really very cool. Anyway, so now I'm going to run the other report. Y'all tell me what's the other report. What's the other report? One's the balance sheet. What's the other report? What's the other one? The PL. What's the PL called for the nonprofit world? What's the PL called? It's called the statement of activity because it's all the activity in and out of an organization. So now, unlike the balance sheet, which is a snapshot at a point in time, this report is over a period of time. This is an entire year's worth. I could make it a month. Doesn't matter to me. So this is my whole year. Okay. And really all you're doing with uh, in um, accounting is you're entering transactions. So they end up either on this report or this report. And then you print out this report, usually compared to the prior years, what I would do. And this report, usually uh, compared to the um, budget. Uh, and then you will be able to um, give that to your board. That's what you give to the board, a PL compared to budget and a balance sheet. And I like to compare it to the prior year at the same time period, okay? Uh, Ray is just telling us that the duplicate tab is, a, is applicable to all cloud-based apps. That's right. Um, uh, Buddy wants to know which version of QBO do small nonprofits use. I'll tell you about that later. Let's stay in accounting world. Okay. So the PL is much easier to understand. It has two parts, the top part and the bottom part. The top part's all the money going in. The bottom part's all the money going out. Okay. Money going in is called income or revenue. Depends upon how you set things up in your books. And this is either called expenses or expenditures, how you set things up in the book. So we have total amount of money going in, 265. Total amount of money going out, 254. So as you can see, this is from a period of time to a period of time. So the p is like a movie of transactions, whereas the balance sheet is a point in time. So basically, that's why the board needs to see both. The PL shows you everything that happened during that month, everything that came in, everything that went out. Donations, grants, membership dues came in, ticket sales, registrations, sales of product in a gift store, and then you paid payroll and you paid rent and you paid utilities and everything we maybe granted to others that went out. Okay? So, um whereas this is a snapshot this tells you basically how you got there. So kind of the way I like to think about it is the PL kind of tells the story of how of where you went during a period of time, whereas the balance sheet is where you are right now. It's the it's the it's the uh, result. So basically, this is a PL. This gives me, okay, for this particular time period, I got in ten thousand dollars more than I spent. And as a result of that, plus wherever I was at the beginning of the month, it turns out that I have 127 in assets and I have liabilities of 56 and the equity is the difference. Okay. So there's one more thing that I want to explain to you when you're looking at QuickBooks and this is unique to QuickBooks. If you notice, when I look at my p and and I should tell you that this organization ends on June 30. This organization that I'm using is a sample that goes from July 1 to June 30. And it's a year. Uh, and it's telling me for that year into June 30, 
I made 10,000. That's my net income, 10,000. Well, if I look at the equity section again, you will notice there's that same 10,000. Look at that, 10,869.53 and 10,869.53. So another way of describing equity, which is also net assets, it's basically the total of all of your profit and losses from the beginning of time added together. The current year's P&Ls show as a negative as a, as a number right there, its own line. These two are the total of all the prior years, okay? And as a matter of fact, what QuickBooks does if you're using it, most packages do is they'll take this 10,000 and on the first day of the next fiscal year they'll move it into one of these other accounts automatically, okay? And start, and, and then this net income starts over again, okay? So all accounting is, is entering transactions so they get on these two reports. And I think what I want to do is I kind of want to show you what each report looks like. So I think I'm going to try and get both of these on the screen at the same time because I want you to see what they both look like at the same time. It's really better if you're in QuickBooks to have double screens, but I can't really show you double screens when I'm teaching. So here's my balance sheet. So here's my balance sheet, and here is my P&L, okay? Let me move this a little bit over here. So all accounting is, is entering transactions, so they end up on these two reports. And what they do is they go through one of the lists in QuickBooks or in whatever your accounting package is. And that list is called the chart of accounts. So here's accounting distilled down. This is the nuts and bolts of how it works. You enter a transaction and you can either enter it manually or you can import it from the bank or however you import into your accounting packages, but you enter a transaction. It could be a dot deposit, it could be a check, or it could be a bill, it could be a credit card charge, whatever it is. But when you enter that transaction, it gets on these two reports, but it gets on these two reports by going to a chart of accounts list first, okay? So I'm gonna pull up the little chart of accounts list and let me just make this a little bigger and pull up the chart of accounts list in QuickBooks Online. Forgive me for those of you that don't use QuickBooks Online. I'm just using this uh, as an example of an accounting package. Let me put that here and uh, let me make this a little bit larger here so you can see it. Okay, cool. So here is the chart of accounts list. So what happens in accounting is you enter a transaction. The transaction hits at least two of these accounts. One of them is a debit, one of them is a credit, but it hits at least two of these accounts. And from there, um, uh, that transaction hits at least two of the accounts. And then the accounts in this uh, list of accounts on the chart of accounts list, they are the same accounts that are on the two financial statements. So the nuts and bolts of accounting is you enter a transaction, hits at least two accounts, okay? So um, let's say, I'm gonna say this again, and then I'm gonna show you, because I really wanna hammer this home. Again, I'm really trying to be basic here before we get into something a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, aggressive. Let me go to a check. Everybody understands what a check is. All right, so every time I enter a transaction, it hits at least two accounts. Let's say I'm going to pay the phone bill. One of the accounts is the bank account that it's coming out of here, and the other account is the expense account that you're putting down here. So is the bank account going to go up or down? Put it in the chat. Is the bank account going to go up or down? Bank account going to go up or down when I write a check? Put it in the chat. Okay, it's going to go down. What about the telephone expense account? Is it going to go down or up? Is the telephone expense account going to go down or up? Put it in the chat. It's going to go up. So let's take a look at our two financial statements. I want to show you something. So let's say the the um the charge, let's make it let's make the charge be $10,000. Make it $10,000, all right? 
Now, when I save this transaction, okay, and let me make this for 06-30-25. Okay, so when I save this transaction, what should happen to this checking account of 77? What is gonna, what's it going to be after I save this? It's going to go down by $10,000. Now, if I go over to my, um, if I go over to my P&L to where uh, telephone is, you see how telephone is 4,000. What's that going to do? What's telephone going to be after I save it? It's going to go up. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this transaction. Now, when I save that transaction, I go back over here. This says 77. But when I refresh the screen, then it says, whoops. Oh, boy. There it is. Now it's 67. Okay. And if I go to my P&L, all right, telephone is at four. I'm going to refresh the screen. And now telephone is going to be at 14. Oh, good, Leslie. It looks like people are really getting a lot out of this. My apologies for the people that know all of this. We're going to get you some more stuff in a minute. All right. So I'm going to go down to telephone. And now telephone is at 14. Okay. Now I'm going to finish one more thing. I'm going to say one more thing. If telephone goes up by 10,000, what happened to net income? Did it go up or down? Did it go up or down? It went down. So I'm going to go back to my balance sheet. So when I entered that check, did the checking account go up or down? Did the checking account go It went down. So total assets, did it go up or down? Total assets, did it go up or down? It went down. Now, when I go down to the equity section, did net income go up or down when I wrote that check? It went down. So what does total liabilities and equity do? Does it go up or down? It goes down. So the balance sheet still balances. When I entered the check, the bank account went down and net income went down. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to y'all? Okay, perfect. So I'm going to do a couple more because I really want to hammer this home. Okay. Let's say that I made a deposit. Okay. So let's say I made a deposit. Um, I will go, and there's lots of ways that you can enter income into QuickBooks. Uh, you can use an invoice. You can use a sales receipt. There's all kinds of things that you can do. But um, one thing you can do is go to a deposit window. So I'm just going to go to a deposit window and I'm going to enter a deposit. We'll say it's a grant. And uh, I've in my webinar that's coming up, we go into all kinds of details, soup to nuts about how to enter grants and point them to expenses and stuff like that. But I'm going to enter a grant. We'll do it for $50,000. Okay. Now, Here's the bank account. So the checking account's going to go up or down when I deposit this up. What about this foundation grant account? Is it going to go up or down? It's going to go up. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay. Now, when I look, I'm going to go back to my balance sheet. Here's my balance sheet. So right now... It says there's 67 in the balance sheet. When I refresh the screen or just run the report, it's going to go up to 117,000. Now, what happened to net income? Did it go up or down? What happened to net income? It went up. There's net income. It went up from 800 to 50,000. So see, the balance sheet still balances. What if you enter a bill? Tell me, I'm not even going to do it anymore. What if you enter a bill? What two accounts? Let's say we enter a bill for an expense. What two account for office supplies? We enter a bill for office supplies. What two accounts get affected when you enter a bill to a vendor? This is for those of you that enter bills before you ever pay them. What account gets affected when you enter a bill? Bank accounts do not get 
I'm not talking when you pay a bill. I'm talking when you enter it. This is for those of you that want QuickBooks to track your bills. So you go to here or whatever your system is and you enter a bill right here. Yeah, it goes to accounts payable. That's right. It goes to accounts payable. So let's look at the balance sheet again. So accounts payable is going to go up. Okay. So say the bill was 5,000, this bill would go up. Now let's say the bill is for office supplies. What else gets affected on our books? If the bill is for office supplies, expenses go up. If expenses go up, what happens to net income on the balance sheet? What happens to net income on the balance sheet? It goes down. So payables went up, net income goes down. So what happened to liabilities and equity? Did it change when I entered a bill? Yes or no? It did change. Let's let's say it again. When I enter a bill for 5,000, the payables goes up by 5,000, net income goes down by 5,000. So total liabilities was 167. Does it change? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's unchanged, okay? If you buy, let's say you, I'm going to do one more. We wrote a check for computer equipment, okay? We wrote a check for computer equipment, okay? What gets affected? What gets affected if you wrote a check for computer equipment that you put as a fixed asset? Cash, does cash go up or down if you write a check? Cash goes down for computer equipment. So it's big enough. I didn't expense it. I put it as a fixed asset. So what happens to my fixed assets? Does it go up or down? It goes up. Okay. And so the balance sheet still balances. You were doing accounting. That's all accounting is. You enter transaction. It affects at least two accounts. One goes, um, one's a debit, one's a credit. And through that process, uh, you um, get financial statements that you can print out for the board. Now, there's one other thing that I want to create or I want to talk about for you. Uh, or uh, let me move this. Where is my PL? Here's my PL. Somebody wanted to see the PL. Here it is. Um, when you run these reports, they exist in two formats, one of two formats. And in QuickBooks, you can pick which one you want to see. Um, does anybody know what those two formats are of how the financial statements appear? Go ahead and put it in the chat if you do. Anyone know how those formats are? Yeah, one of them is cash-based and one of them is accrual-based. So I'm just going to stop right here and I'm going to try and find out what you guys are using, okay? So who here in their accounting package enters bills before you ever had a chance to pay them who enters bills who's entering bills so if you're entering bills then your books are probably accrual based okay because what an accrual based financial statement is it's in a statement that includes all your outstanding revenues that you haven't received yet and your expenses that you haven't paid yet. It includes all your outstanding receivables and payables, okay? So if I make this, I think I'm gonna make this just for one month, 060125. All right, so this is one month. Oh, that's the balance sheet. I gotta do it on the uh, P&L. So hold on one second here. Where is my P&L? Here it is. Okay, no, it's not here. And it's not here. Probably here. Okay, here's my PL. Okay. So I'm gonna make this just for one month, 060125. So this is one month of activity. All right. So it says here for the month, I made twenty-six thousand dollars. But this is accrual based. What that means is that this revenue for the month includes all of my revenues, even my outstanding invoices that I've invoiced customers. Now, most of you probably don't invoice customers. In other words, you probably don't, most of you probably don't use this invoice screen right here. But if you did, then when you looked at the month of June, 
all the revenues would be there, even the ones you haven't received yet. And then I asked who does bills. If it's an accrual-based statement, all of your expenses will be there, even the bills you haven't paid yet. That's what an accrual-based statement is, all right? It includes your receivables and payables. A cash-based statement, and in QuickBooks, you can just click right over to cash. What that does is it simply gives me the money that I have gotten in and the expenses that I have incurred or actually paid, okay? So it's more like money in, money out, whereas accrual base is the money that I've earned and the money that I've expended, regardless of whether or not I paid for it yet, but the expenses that I've incurred, okay? So I like accrual base better. And if you're trying to match generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP is um set tells us that we're supposed to use accrual basis but many of you may be using cash basis and cash basis is perfectly fine so cash basis is not real time at all um Tim, tina cash basis is just when did i spend the money as opposed to when did i expense the transaction okay when did i pay for the transaction okay um modified cash is you're in the middle you accrue some things, but not others. Okay. Christy says she, her board wants them to switch to cash. Well, that's easy. Keep doing what you're doing. But when you print out for the board, just change this over to cash <laughs> because see in QuickBooks, you can do both. Okay. So I think I'm going to move on here away from my accounting. Yeah. No worries. No worries. So, all right. Looks like we've got some people that now I have a bunch of slides here. You're going to get the recording, but it basically just explains everything that I just taught you. OK, so. All right. Now, the things that you should give your board each month, there are two reports that you should give your board each month. One of them is the balance sheet. But what I like to do, and this is just my own personal opinion, is when I do a balance sheet, I want to compare it to the prior year at the same time. So uh, let's see. Here's my balance sheet right here. This is what I like to give the board. So I can see, like, let's say it's July. So you're reporting for June. So they can see how much money's in the bank account, receivables. They know exactly how much they have. But what's really interesting is to see how that compares to the exact same day a year ago. So a year ago, I only had 36,000. Now I have 121,000. So see, I think that kind of stuff is interesting and helpful. All right. It really lets you know that we must have made a lot more money. Okay. Um, so uh, indeed, uh, that's probably what is happening. So uh, anyway, so that's one thing. Is there anybody um, who has another question about or has a question about the balance sheet? Um, my uh, Janice says my board appreciates this comparison. Yes. Um, how do you set up? How do you do this? Well, you know, Martha, it's hard to answer because I don't know whether you're in QuickBooks desktop or QuickBooks online or something else. So you're in QBO. So I'm going to teach something for everybody in QBO. But those of you that aren't in QBO are not going to appreciate this. I'm just going to do this real quickly. I'm going to go to reports. This is the kind of stuff that this is why it's really important to come to, you know, a bigger training session. But you see over here, it says compare another period, previous year, change, and run. So that's how it is. I start with a standard comparison in QBD, um, and then I can I can customize in QBD to add. It's the same way in QBD. All right. All right. So uh, let's see. The other report that you're going to want to give them is, oh, by the way, before you actually give them a balance sheet, make sure that the numbers on the balance sheet are correct. Okay. <laughs> I think that's pretty basic. But what I do is I go through the balance sheet. So this would be four to June 30, 25. And you would 
the way that you do that is by reconciling the bank accounts and the credit card accounts, but also eyeballing the furniture, the liabilities, and make sure everything is weird. It's not is not incorrect. Make sure everything is right. Okay. Um, where does the liability number come from on the balance sheet? So it's a total liabilities accounts payable. That's what gets affected whenever you enter a bill. If you set up a credit card as an account, that goes here and you enter charges. And the rest of these are done basically by entering checks and bills and or doing journal entries and pointing them to these liability accounts. Okay. All right. So um, the uh, that's it for the balance sheet. So the P&L, I want to compare it to a budget. So I do want you, no matter what accounting package you have, to go into budgeting and create a budget for your organization's PL so that you can have something to compare to. So um, you in, in the online edition, you simply click create new. You pick what year you want to create a budget for. This would be the year if you're year into June 30, you'd be doing this one right now. Um, in the online edition, you click consolidated and then you fill in the numbers. Now I've got a whole section on budgeting in my three day series. And we go over how to budget by month, how to budget by quarter, um, how to budget by year, uh, and specifics on, you know, how to make the process easier. But basically at the end, this is what you should be giving to your board each month. I have a memorized report here and it is a budget to actual for the board. With the actual numbers, the budgeted numbers, and then the variances so that we can see how well we're doing compared to what our plan was. All right. Um, uh, if we get a $30,000 grant to pay for solar panels, how do you want to show the income and expense on these two statements? Well, the income would go here, grant income, and the expenses is it solar panels for, um, for you personally to use. Uh, then you'd want to create an accountant will tell you I'm an accountant to put it to an asset account. But if you want to see it on the PL, create an expense account called fixed asset purchases and point it there so that you can be able to see it. So the board will be able to see it. OK, um, let's see. Um, so that's the PL compared to budget. And what else do I need to say? There's there's something else that is really important. We got about 10 minutes left. How is everybody doing so far? We've got about 10 minutes. Give me some sort of a comment or a word. Who has not learned a thing yet? Who's not learned one single thing? I'm sure there's somebody that hasn't learned anything. I want to hear who you are. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. So this is good. So you're learning. That's good. All right. Okay, good, good, good. All right. So here we go. So if you are not, uh, well, if, if you are new to nonprofit accounting, then things are a little weird in the world of nonprofits. So let me explain something to you. When you are entering a transaction, and I'm just going to go to a check. Okay, I'm going to go to a check here. Okay. You probably know that you put the name of the person you wrote the check to here. You put the bank account here. You put the expense account here. But the thing that I want to explain to you is that if you're not into the world of nonprofits, you came from somewhere else, the only thing that you can really, you really think about when you think about entering an expense, let's say, is what I call the natural category. And that means what it is, the object, what the expense is, the natural category. And that's what you put in your chart of accounts list, okay? The natural category. And that's one thing that you need to track when you're entering transactions, okay? The natural category. And that's what should be on your chart of accounts list, okay? And that's what we've been talking about. Those make up the financial statements. But I'm just kind of guide you into what your chart of accounts should have. Give me some examples of the natural categories in your chart of accounts list, both either for income accounts or for expense accounts. Just name a few. I'll name a couple. Salaries and wages is one. 
landscaping, supplies, utilities, office expense, telephone, contractors, insurance, repairs, office supplies, music program. Stop, 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 stop. Music program is not a natural category. What did you spend for the music program? Did you buy supplies for the music program? Then the natural category is supplies. Did you pay rent for the music program? Then the natural categories is rent. You should not have an expense account that is a program, okay? So um, rent, postage. The second thing that you need to track, the second thing that you need to track, and this is something that nonprofits that aren't houses of worship have to track. Everybody else has to track this thing is the function of the activity, the transaction. Natural category is the object. We'll take that music program. What you're supposed to put here is what type of expense? What's the natural category? It was supplies for the music program. You're supposed to use the class feature if you're using QuickBooks to say whether it's program, admin, or fundraising. And if it's program, which program it is. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is in addition to saying what the natural category is of the transaction, you have to put it in one of three buckets. And those buckets are program, admin, and fundraising. Unless you're a house of worship, then you don't have to worry about it. But the rest of us do. And the reason why the rest of us do is because if for no other reason, we have to fill out, nonprofits have to fill out a tax return called a 990. And the 990 breaks out your expenses into three groupings. They are program. Management in general, which some people call admin, some people call overhead, and fundraising. And so your expenses have to be reported not only by object, which is what they are, payroll taxes, salaries, accounting, office, advertising, this is rent, travel, but they also have to be reported in these columns. Is it a program, management, or fundraising? Okay. And if they total it at the bottom and people look to see whether the majority of your money is going for program stuff as opposed to admin and fundraising. And in my three-day webinar series, I go into great detail about which expenses are really more programmatic in nature versus which are admin versus which are fundraising. So like your subscription to QuickBooks, that's admin. Your subscription to TechSoup, that's admin, all right? Um, whereas most of the other expenses that you have are probably program in nature, but we should use the class feature. Program A, program B, admin, fundraising. Every single one of you, unless you're a house of worship, should be pointing transactions not only to the natural category. We'll go to a bill this time which is whatever it is here, we'll say liability insurance. But also you should be using a separate list in QuickBooks. It's the class list to say whether it's program, admin, or fundraising. And yes, it is true. Some expenses like liability insurance on the office um, should probably be split between your programs, admin, and fundraising. And QuickBooks allows you to do that, okay? Um, management and admin, is it the same as indirect costs? It is, but you don't necessarily account for it if you're trying to use indirect costs for a grant. That's something that I go through when I'm teaching my grants webinar. Um, but anyway, uh, the third thing that you need to track, well, let me just show you here. This is where you put the natural category when you're entering a transaction. You use the class feature to say whether it's program admin or fundraising. There's one other thing you need to track about an expense in particular. What's the natural category? What is it program admin or fundraising? What's the third thing you might need to track? Anybody know what the third thing that you might need to track? What grant pays for it? 
Yes, ma'am. In uh, Peggy in kind does show up as an income account. What grant pays for it? That's right. So if you have grants that you need to track and you need a little P and L for a grant, you use this last field right here, which is the customer field. Now I don't know how it works in other accounting packages, but all I know is you need three different fields because there's three things you got to track. One, you got to track the natural category, which goes here. One, you got to track whether it's program admin or fundraising. And then finally, what grant pays for it right there. Those are the three things you need to track. Okay. Yes, you can track in kind in the QuickBooks Online. It's one of the things that I go through in my three-day webinar series. I'm going to go to QuickBooks Made Easy. I'm also going to pull up a poll question here for you. Let me go back here. Um, I'm going to launch a poll here. Would you like to receive a quick tips newsletter once a month? And this is for those of you that want, you feel like you can learn from me uh, and you want to learn more once a month, sometimes twice a month, I'll come up with a little video tip. Ultimately, it ends up in my YouTube page, but I'll send it directly to you with a little quick tips e-newsletter. Um, if you say yes, you want it. So if you go ahead and put that, then Aretha will give me your um, email address so we'll be able to add you to the list. Um, so uh, should an in-kind donation ever be added to a restricted revenue account? So Sandy, you shouldn't even have accounts called restricted and unrestricted. Um, so that tells me that you definitely need to go for the training. I'm going to go to webinars right here. And um, those of you that are using QuickBooks Desktop, we're doing the webinar on October the 31st, the 1st and the 2nd. Those of you that are doing the online edition, it's November 7th, 8th and 9th. If you click on either one of these, it's going to tell you every single thing you need to know about what we're teaching. Look at all the stuff that we're teaching. On day three, tracking pledges, tracking restricted grants, how to enter special fund, uh, special fundraising events, in kind contributions, how to get donor thank you letters from people. But we also are doing the basics, okay? Setting up the correct accounts, entering your programs, entering your budget, okay? Day two is real nuts and bolts, entering all the income and the expense transactions, okay? So it's normally when you sign up for this thing, two ninety nine. dollars So I'll just click here that I want to get a ticket. Um, you can also get a VIP ticket, which gives you tech support with us as well. Um, and then you can call us with questions and stuff. But anyway, um, it's $2.99 normally. The discount is, let's see, I've already done all of that. Um, here we go. The discount is TS40 off. That's TS for tech soup, 40 off. If you put that in, you will get $40 off of this three-day webinar series. Okay, so please write that down. Um, uh, and uh, House of Worships. So House of Worships, for those of you that are House of Worships, I've got a training product just for Houses of Worship. Okay, we just did a live webinar, but I have an on-demand webinar. Not on-demand. I, uh, Yeah, on-demand. And it's down here. It's called Houses of Worship. This tells you exactly how to set everything up and track everything if you're a house of worship. We pay particular attention to all of your funds, all of the designated funds and the restricted funds. Uh, they want to see the code again. The code is TS40 off, TechSoup40 off. This code is good until Saturday, uh, October the 14th. Um, at midnight Pacific time. And if you're QuickBooks desktop users, October 31st, 1st and 2nd, it's two and a half hours each day. It starts at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We take two breaks. We'll listen to music. We'll have fun. And it's the same people each day. So you'll be able to play around with what you learn on day one, come to day two. Yes, you get the recordings afterwards. Okay. Uh, all right. I think I'm done. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Aretha, to finish us off. Awesome sauce. I'll email everybody the slides um, tomorrow and the recording. So those of you who missed the code, maybe you just uh, missed it, you'll get it tomorrow on those who see it on the replay. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you on uh, 
Thursday or next October 17th. You're coming back, Greg. Oh, am I? Yeah. I didn't know that. What am yeah. I teaching? Budgeting? Quick, how to download QuickBooks. Downloading. Yes. Okay. That's just for QuickBooks. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And hopefully I will see you at the end of the month for the three-day webinar series. Take care. Bye-bye.